You've just started your wedding planning business and now you're wondering, how am I gonna get my first client if I don't have any work to show them? In this video, I wanna share with you four simple ways that you can begin to build your portfolio as a wedding planner. If you're new around here, hey, I'm Candice Coppola. I'm a former wedding planner and designer for over 12 years. I planned amazing events all over the world with clients on parties and weddings, helping them celebrate moments that mattered in their life. And I know what it's like to start a business and have absolutely no experience and also no portfolio of work to show a potential client. It's a question as old as time for any wedding planner who's ever started in their career. So take some comfort in knowing that every wedding planner who's come before you, and I mean every single one, has asked themselves this question. What do I do if I don't have a portfolio to show? How am I going to get that first or that next client? A person who's not my family member, a person who doesn't know me personally, how am I gonna attract people? Who's gonna wanna take a chance on me and give me this opportunity? if I can't show them what I'm capable of doing. So take comfort that every wedding planner before you has asked themselves this question, and they've also overcome it. And I think that's really important to understand. While it might feel stressful and hard where you're at right now trying to figure this out, look at all the planners you follow on Instagram, all the businesses that you admire, and know that they all started where you started too. And if they can get to where they are, where they're booking clients and you're aspiring to even maybe have the same kind of business they have, you can get there too. So how does a wedding planner get a portfolio? What, what do planners do? Well, let me walk you through some four simple steps that will help you to build your portfolio. And these steps are steps that pretty much every wedding planner takes as they start and grow their business so they can get that first client. The very first thing that you can do to build up your portfolio is to do a styled shoot. Now a styled shoot is literally styling something, anything wedding or party related and photographing it and then having those images, even video content, to sell your services and to showcase what it is that you do. You've probably seen styled shoots all over Instagram, all over TikTok, all over Pinterest. They're beautiful, they're gorgeous, they're inspirational. And a lot of those styled shoots are done by industry veterans or people who've been doing them for a while. And so while we aspire to get to that level of styled shoot, what I want for you, somebody just starting out, is to use whatever you have at your disposal to create something beautiful that you can then photograph with your phone or if you have a photography friend, have them help. And then you can use those images to market your business. I'm gonna show you pictures from my very first styled shoot in a second. But I want you to know this is where I started. I think it's nice to see where someone like even me, where I started. This first styled shoot that I did actually got published on Style Me Pretty, believe it or not. And you're gonna be like, when you see the pictures, you're gonna be like, how did they, what? <laughs> What? <laughs> but it got published on Style Me Pretty and I used this styled shoot for my marketing. I put it on my website. I blogged about it. You could probably still go find it on, on Jubilee Events' blog. It's probably still there. But there was no social media, so I didn't Instagram about it, but I would have. So this is the first styled shoot that I ever did in my career. And if you know anything about my career, you know that I've done almost 50 styled shoots. I published two books full of them. I've been hired by brands and, and by magazines to do styled shoots for them. This is where I started. I literally went down to Big Y, which is a supermarket in Connecticut, and I bought flowers. And then I went inside my cabinets and I took out the china people bought me for my bridal shower. And I picked some napkins up out of the closet. I printed a menu off of my home computer. I used the flatware from our silverware drawer. And this is the styled shoot that I was able to create. I photographed it myself and I sent the images in and Style Me Pretty for some reason was like, wow, this, this slaps, like, let's get this up immediately. <laughs> they published it. I think those days are over. <laughs> but they featured it. It was hugely gratifying. And I did it with what I had access to at the time. I didn't get stuck in analysis paralysis. I wasn't scared. I wasn't fearful. I didn't overanalyze everything. I did it and I leveraged it. And then from that experience, I was then able to do other collaborations later on. So listen, you have things around your house that you can use to style a shoot. You could also, this is a great excuse to go to Target and Home Goods. 
Like this is the perfect excuse to go into home goods. It's a business expense. It's a tax write off <laughs> to go and pick up a couple of fun things and do a styled shoot. Do it in your home or do it in a space you have access to and then use those images to help build and grow your portfolio. If you wanna do something a little more advanced and you want more help on how to do a styled shoot, I have a great, 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 amazing resource inside my shop, the Candace Coppola shop. It's called the Styled Shoots Rulebook and it is everything that I have learned. Over 50 plus styled shoots, over 12 years of designing styled shoots, everything I know from how to come up with a design to where to host your styled shoot, how to do it with strategy, how to get vendors on board, how much you can expect to pay, who pays for what, it is literally everything you need to know. And it's available in my shop. So I'll link that in the description box below. Great resource to have on hand, whether you're ready to go in that direction or not just yet, it's gonna teach you everything you need to know. So a styled shoot is how most wedding planners really begin to build their portfolio. Another thing that you can do is a brand photo shoot. So this leads me to option number two. To build your portfolio when you're just starting out, hire a photographer to take some images of you. These are those cute brand shoots that you see on Instagram and on people's websites where they're typing on a computer or they're you know drawing something or they're working on something or they're holding a bouquet of flowers. There are so many fun shots you can get of yourself in your element styling something or adjacent to flowers or your computer that you can use those images then to market your business. Now, I know this isn't like an actual portfolio item. It's not a tablescape, it's not an invitation suite, it's not models posing in dresses or in formal wear, but it shows you off. And when people hire wedding planners or they hire businesses, they wanna do business with people, not businesses. Good lesson that you really need to be the face of your business. You need to inject your personality, you need to show off who you are, and a brand shoot will help you to do that. Getting in front of the camera and showcasing your fun personality and your style will only help to attract people to you. And it's important that you have professional headshots of yourself for your business. So my encouragement is to link up with a photographer in your area and hire them to take some brand photos for you. I have two great podcast episodes on this topic that are pretty recent. Episodes 101 and 102. It, they're sort of a two-part episode series on brand shoots. In the first episode, I share a more recent experience I had doing a brand shoot and building up the confidence to get in front of the camera. So if I'm saying this to you and you're like, <laughs> cute, but I'm not ready yet. I don't feel good, I need to lose 10 pounds, I need to color my hair, I need to get Botox, I need to go shopping, I need to do all the things to feel better. 101, episode 101 of the Power and Purpose podcast is gonna share with you my experience on all of that and the results that I achieved in my brand shoot in spite of how I felt and just go and listen to it. I think it'll be a good confidence boost and also just like, it's nice to know that you're not the only one who is maybe scared to put yourself out there like that. And then the second episode is with my brand photographer, Amelie Orange from the Branded Boss Lady. She's based in Orlando, PS. If you're local or you wanna fly down there, her work is amazing. Amelie joins me to share how you can prepare for your brand shoot. So there are two great episodes over on the Power and Purpose podcast to help you prepare for this. Now the next thing that you can do to build your portfolio as a planner when you're just starting out is to actually take some behind the scenes of your work, of you working. And I think this is like an underrated marketing technique. We feel like we need to have professional images of everything and it needs to be professionally shot and it needs to be of a certain caliber and that's just not the case anymore, okay? Social media has sort of taken that away and people love to see content that you film with your phone and they love to see behind the scenes of what you're working on. So you can take out your phone and you can take images and video of you working on your computer, of you building your business, of you learning things maybe inside the planner's playbook or a playbook that you downloaded from my shop. You can take videos and pictures of you going out to lunch with a fellow vendor, meeting someone for coffee. You can take images and pictures of you setting up your HoneyBook account or um, creating a design for an upcoming photo shoot that you're doing. There's so many things that you can, uh, that you have available to you behind the scenes is what we call it. 
behind the scenes that you can just actually use to market your business and to attract people to you. Instagram, TikTok are a great place to show all of this as you build and scale your business. Now here's the thing, you know, I bet you follow me on Instagram. If you don't, you should at Candice.Cobla. And listen, I post some great stuff over there, okay? Like some great business related content, but I'm pretty sure you stick around because you wanna see what's going on in my life. And you wanna see what I share about island life, about my hobbies, you wanna see my Real Housewives memes, you wanna chat about Vanderpump Rules, like you're following me and maybe engrossed in what I'm doing because I'm showing you behind the scenes. Most people are like that. We follow people because we love to see what goes on in their lives. It's like peeking into somebody's life. It's a window into their world. Give the people what they want. Give them a peek into your world, even if we're just kind of faking it a bit until we make it. I recommend it to many a planner, pretend like you're working on a design, use the, the, the design playbook we've created for you, that's available in my shop. Uh, create an inspiration board, create a mock-up, like play around. Maybe it's not for a real client, but who cares? Nobody needs to know that. So there's so many opportunities to create behind the scenes. Use those opportunities to help build your portfolio. Lastly, this is the easiest thing to do, is just use stock images. I know that stock images get a bad rap and maybe you think, oh, that's not ethical. It is completely ethical to use stock images in your marketing and on your website. That's what they're there for. That's why stock images exist and you wouldn't be the first business to use them. I use stock images, especially over on my blog. And so do big brands, big businesses use stock images. So instead of being scared of stock images, I wanna encourage you to go and purchase some and then legally by purchasing those images, you're given image usage, usage rights and you can use them on your website, on your blog, on TikTok, on Instagram to market your business, which will help to bring in those first set of customers. When I started my business, I used stock images on my website. We didn't have Instagram back then. I used stock images on my website and I also used images of my mom's wedding. Like so random, right? She was married recently at that time. It wasn't like I was using images from her 80s wedding. But I mean, she had been married within like a year of me launching my business. So I also used images from her wedding, like detail shots, like with her bouquet and things like that. That's all I had on my website was stock images. And listen, it took a little while, about six months for my first client to be a yes, to land my first client. But people cruised my website and they thought like, hey, this looks pretty good. Like I got inquiries and finally somebody booked me. The same can be said for you. I've linked below some of my favorite stock images websites where you can subscribe for a monthly fee. They have yearly or annual fees. They're actually pretty inexpensive. And these stock websites, they not only give you images like typing at your computer or styled flat lays, they also have weddings. They have images from weddings seasonally all over the, the country, different styles, rustic, more glamorous. So you're able then to even download images of weddings and use actual weddings on your website. Now what I don't want you to do is put this on a portfolio page and pretend like this is your actual work, like this is a real wedding that you planned. But you also don't need to tell people that you didn't have anything to do with those images. It, it's like, it's like a, 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 a detail we'll leave out. <laughs> you don't want to claim them, but you don't want to, you don't need to tell people that you downloaded them from a stock photography website, all right? So those are some ways that you can build your portfolio when you're just starting out as a wedding planner. I'd love to hear what are you going to do first? And if you are a more established planner watching this video, thanks for watching. <laughs> I'd love to know which one did you use or did you use them all when you started your business? Leave some encouragement for somebody who's just starting out. And if there's a tip here that I didn't share, please feel free to share that below in the comments section. If you liked this video, do me a favor, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more videos from me on this channel, click that subscribe button and ring the bell so that you'll be notified every time I upload a new video on Thursdays. All right, friend, happy portfolio building. I'll see you in the next video. And I've linked a video here that I think you should watch.